Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 15 of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, I'm going to show you how you can use EQ and compression to get the best sound possible out of your vocals. We're looking at spoken word for a podcast today, but even if you've recorded your vocals for music, this video is going to help you to get the best sound possible as well. So here we are in the session. You can see in the project window, a podcast session you might recognize from the editing part of this course. Uh, we, we've got two voices here, the host and the guest. Uh, and the goal is to make it make them both sound as clean, professional, um, clear as possible, just as pleasant for the listener as we can, because it really helps listener retention for our podcasts. So if we take a listen to the audio quickly, and you have their egos and um, talents to balance. Um, and then the guest, which is me. So they've written written their music like you'd write plans for a building. So both the, the guest and the host have, is, is good quality audio to begin with. That's the main thing because it, you don't want to be in a scenario where you're just recording terrible audio in the hopes that you can make it sound better in the mixing stage with EQ and compression things. Um, so you want to try and get the best recording possible to begin with, but sometimes that's not always possible depending on your situation, your budget and things like that. Um, and even audio that's been recorded very well with professional microphones and everything can normally benefit from a bit of EQ and compression to help clean it up and make it sound more professional. So if you're not sure, just to briefly explain EQ or equalization and compression. EQ or equalization is basically where you can alter the level of the bass, the mids and the trebles or the, the lows and the highs uh, separately from each other. So for example, you can decrease the bass using equalization and bring up the treble. Um, it's a bit more nuanced than that, which we'll see in, in a second, but just to give you the basic idea. And with compression, the idea is that you're increasing the volume of the quiet parts uh, and decreasing the volume of the loud parts to give a nice even balance. To start off, I'm just going to make sure that the levels of both are where we want them because we don't really want to be changing levels too much after we've compressed. So let's just take a listen to them back to back, make sure there's a nice balance, something as close to that as possible, or maybe if they're left. But they don't have the experience to necessarily know. Okay, I mean, you can they see at the top here in the meter, it's know, peaking around, so around, around minus yeah, 18. Um, um, it'll be just up to you to, to same as this one. And just listening to it, it sounds pretty balanced. Neither of them are too overpowering, but still before we start, I'm just going to increase the volume of both of them. This is going to help us when it gets to the compression stage, and I'll explain why very shortly. But first, I want to get rid of a couple of these very big peaks that's sticking out foam ball on the, on the end of mine at the moment. Yeah, okay, we've looked at that one before, but I'm just going to bring that down again by, let's say, about 6 dB. Foam ball on the Okay, let's leave it like that for now, and then I'm going to normalise again. So effect, normalize, and let's do it to minus one dB. We don't want to go over minus one. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the normalization with this one. Let's just bring those down. So just highlight it, go to effect, amplify. Um, three dB is, is a, a fair amount to re reduce it by a kind of noticeable difference. Um, but it's going to depend a lot on on the actual uh, on the audio itself, how how much you need to amplify or decrease it by. Now a little trick here, I just amplified that. Well, I deamplified it by three dB. Now you can see here, I've got repeat amplify control R. So if you can do control R or command R if you're on a Mac, it just repeats the exact last effect you've you've just done. So I'll just do the exact same thing. So you can find these little these peaks uh, just before we get before we get to compressing things. Um, there we go. Let's let's leave it at that for now. And then again, 
as we did with the host vocal, we're going to normalize that to minus one. Let's listen again, make sure they're nice and balanced still. Don't require power and they're a lot more close range. Get yourself a decent mic. Don't worry about everything else so much, but get yourself. Okay, yeah. I mean, we normalized them to the same level, so it hasn't made too much of a difference to the balance between the two. Now, let's get into EQ. So first thing is just to grab a section of audio that's that's nice and clear that you'll really be able to hear the difference when you, when you make these changes with the with the plugin. Got our audio here selected, and then you want to have a listen. Getting your room set up right as well, and getting the right microphone, just to give you a real idea of, of what the audio sounds like. Then you're going to go into effect, and then into filter curve. Bit confusing because it's not called EQ or equalization, but filter curve is the one that you want. I'll just flatten that so it's on the default view. Now here you have your EQ. You've got the, the, the bass, the low end down here between around 20 hertz and around sort of 200 hertz. And then you've got the mids, the low mids and the high mids all the way up to sort of 4,000 and then the, the very highs, the trebles right at the top here. Je this is gonna depend on what your audio sounds like, what you'll need to do here. But there are a few things that you're probably gonna need to do regardless of of what your audio sounds like. And this applies to sung vocals as well, not just spoken vocals. The first thing I wanna do, and that I recommend doing, is to remove the very, very low end because it's it's not needed, it just creates rumble, it, it, makes, it makes your audio muddy, especially when you've got two people talking at once. So just click here around, let's say, 90, so just before the 100 mark. And then, oh, make sure that stays in the middle there. And then a second click will give you a second point where you can drag that down. And you don't want to try not to do a, a, a very sharp curve, although it does give you a, a curve there. Um, the green line is how the audio has actually been affected. But if we do a nice a gentle curve, just gently um, bringing down those very low ends. And then what you can do, as long as you've got your audio highlighted, you can click preview and hear the difference getting your room set up right as well and getting the right microphone. So it doesn't actually sound a huge amount different, but that's okay because like I said, it's, it's just low rumble that you can barely even hear, but it does muddy up your recordings. So we're gonna get rid of that. I also tend to reduce the low mids to the mids a little bit. Um, it's where you'll find this kind of boxy nasally quality to the voice often, and also where you get a lot of this low end buildup of of untreated rooms. So from around 250 or 200 to about 500, again, this is gonna depend on your audio, but this is generally where I'm looking. Um, and then you can take off maybe 6 dB, that's quite a fair amount. Again, a nice gentle curve there. Let's listen again. Getting your room set up right as well and getting the right microphone. It's just sounding a little bit smoother. And then finally, I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkle on the top end, just around around the, the, the highs, around sort of 5K to about 8K. Just a small boost, maybe a two or three dB. Getting your room set up right as well and getting the right microphone. Now let's click OK. You'll see that that's adjusted the audio slightly and we can compare the difference. Kind of two main kinds of microphones that people are normally buying for, for these situations, Zoom calls. Kind of two main kinds of microphones that people are normally buying for for these situations, Zoom calls. So you can tell that the, the volume's decreased slightly because we've cut a fair amount of audio out, but that's fine. We can always bring it back up again. But what you'll notice is that it's just a little bit more smoother. It doesn't have that kind of boxy low end um, that, that you'll find with a lot of uh, dialogue recordings. It sounds more professional. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna undo that and zoom out, select the whole chunk 
And then again, you can just repeat that filter curve or press Control or Command R to apply it to the entire audio. Now that's decreased the volume slightly, so we can just go back into that normalize and, and bring it back up to minus one dB. There we go, okay, so let's have a listen to the host vocal. Get yourself a decent mic. Don't worry about everything else so much, but get yourself something decent as a mic. And it was you know, early pandemic and there was no mics for sale. It was like, I... Okay, yeah, it's it's a nice uh, nice quality recording. There's a little bit more room sound because um, obviously I'm recording in a treated room. Uh, my friend Adrian here is is not, but that's fine. It's still a quality recording. We're going to go into the filter curve. Excuse me. We're going to go into the filter curve. I fell for it. I saw the EQ and clicked it, um, and then luckily it it saves our uh, our settings here. Now. Just from experience, I know that that the kind of room sound that we can hear lies more sort of in the in the mids to the high mids. So I'm actually going to extend that along right up to about a thousand, and let's apply that. Just get yourself a decent mic. Don't worry about everything else so much. But get. Yourself... And there we go. It's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more professional sounding, a bit cleaner. It's there's less low end in there. Um, and, and when you have two voices back to back and one of them's got significantly less or more low end, more uh, bass, then it can sound slightly jarring, slightly off. Uh, so I am going to undo that and then go back into the filter curve and just give a little boost in the low mids there. Just, just, um, just one to two dB. I mean, it's sort of below the low mids, really. It's, it's more more bass in that region, around sort of 150 hertz. Let's try that now. It, just get yourself a decent mic. Don't worry about everything else so much, but get yourself something decent as a mic. It, just get yourself a decent mic. Don't worry about everything. Yeah, uh, it just makes it a little bit more warm and, and pleasant to listen to. You don't want You don't want all the bass disappearing. So I'm gonna apply that to the whole thing. Right, and as you can see, again, that's decreased the volume slightly, but we'll be uh, we'll be sorting that out shortly. Just gonna bring that peak down. Minus three, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna talk compression. Okay, so as I said with compression, the goal is to bring these high, louder, louder parts down and the quieter parts up to give a nice smooth balance. So I'm gonna select a piece of audio again we're going down to compressor this time in the effects menu and you'll have this nice little slide to look at. I'm going to explain what these different settings do and give you a, a general idea of what you might be looking for uh, in terms of your settings. So the threshold is sort of the, the most important one. That's The threshold is how loud the audio needs to be before the compressor will, will squash it down and reduce the volume. So the threshold is set to minus 13 dB. That means if the audio goes over minus 13 dB, which is around here at the top there, it's gonna squash it down and make it quieter. Now, I know that. First one that I always say is record audio. Like there's no mixing. Oh, let's have a look actually. I mentioned it earlier, um, yep. but sometimes Okay, so it's occasionally peaking over that 13, so that, that does look seem like a quite a good place to start, actually. So we'll leave that on minus 13, and hopefully it will just catch those peaks. You don't want it completely crushing the whole thing, otherwise there's no point. It's not going to make balance. It will just crush the whole audio. The ratio is how much it's squashing that audio by. So once the audio goes over this minus 13 dB mark, if we set the ratio to say three to one, for every dB that it goes over, it's gonna reduce the level by uh, by about three dB. So three dB is, is a fair amount, um, but it's not too much. Let's let's go for, for around there. The, then you've got the attack and the release time. So the attack is how fast it reacts once it's gone over that, that minus 13 level. Um, if you do it too if you do it too quickly, so that's just 0.10 of a second, it might start to sound like it's kind of 
almost cutting off or softening the beginning of words which might make things sound unnatural. So let's just bring that up slightly. Um, yeah, point, point 0.2 of a second. Then the release time is how quickly the compressor stops compressing after the, the audio has gone gone back down below the threshold. Now, one second is already really slow and that's the fastest that it allows for, so I'm just gonna leave it on that. Let's have a listen and also take a look at the uh, the waveform um, this time, because you should see it start to kind of balance out a bit. Okay, very small difference there. It's only right at the beginning. It just brought that peak, peak, uh, peak down. So I'm actually gonna bring that threshold down. Let's say minus 16 and maybe squash it a little bit more with a three to one ratio. Take a look at the waveform again. Okay, you can see it's pushed that uh, that peak down as well. I'm gonna go a bit more and then we're gonna have a listen. 18. Slightly faster attack. Let's have a listen. First one that I always say is record like there's no mixing. I mentioned it earlier. Um, yep. but Sometimes, first one that I always say is record like there's no mixing. I mentioned it earlier. Great, okay, that's sounding a little bit smoother without sounding unnatural. I'm just gonna give you an example of what it sounded like if we went a bit too hard on, on the compressor. So if we say, if we bring it right down, so it's basically compressing everything and a big six to one ratio. Yeah, see it's completely squashed it. It's balanced out everything and we could bring that level up and it'd be very balanced in terms of um, how loud or soft it's getting, but it's gonna sound pretty horrible. I'll, I'll demonstrate. Just bring that up a little bit. First one that I always say is record like there's no mixing. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, yeah, so it's got this kind of weird sort of pumping where the, the volume goes right down at the beginning there. First one that I always say is- And then comes back up again, so it sounds very unnatural. Um, so, Let's put our settings back to what they were. I believe it was a minus 16 and a three to one ratio. Great, okay, and let's apply that to the whole thing. You can use that Control R or Command R to repeat. And there you can see it's just brought down those peaks. Again, we're gonna go for that normalize again. Now that everything's a lot more smooth. Now, if you're wondering why I reduce the level of the peaks manually before, it's because the compressor is only gonna bring them down by a certain amount. And I just wanted to kind of help the compressor out a bit by by getting rid of those real, real loud bits. And there you've got a much healthier, more balanced signal there. Let's do the same thing with the host vocal, with the compressor. We might need to make some slight adjustments. Okay, that looks good to me. I'll just have a look, listen, make sure it's sounding natural. You know. Um, it, it, as you say, with podcasts, I listen to yeah, not that many, but quite a few. Um, and I do tend to... Be okay, it, it's smooth, it's natural, you can't tell there's compression. It's sounding really good to me, nice and professional. We clearly improved the tonality of the audio there. Uh, I'm just going to save that. In a couple of videos' time, we're going to be uh, applying a couple of extra little things and then, and then exporting our podcast episode. Thanks to your mixing with EQ and compression, your vocals should be sounding a lot more clean and professional and just nice to listen to now. But what if we throw some music into the mix as well? Well, that's what we're gonna be looking at in part 16. We're gonna find out how to mix mix your vocals to a backing track. So if you're a musician mixing your vocals to music or if you're a podcaster uh, mixing to a backing track, this is gonna help you get the best sound possible. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon below so you know when that video is released. Uh, leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below. Have you managed to make your vocals sound professional in Audacity using EQ compression? If you're still struggling, obviously just, just let me know and I'll, I'll be there to help out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 16.